Let's take a look at a practical example of classes and objects. All right, we found some back controller once more. And in this tutorial, we are finally going to actually code something with classes and objects over here. So everything that we've learned in the previous tutorial that was theory is now going to be put into action. And for this, what we will do is we will create a custom class, which is going to be the dog class. So it's going to function very similar to the example that we've seen in the last tutorial. And for this, what we actually want to do to create a new class, we actually have to go to the left over here and in the source and then Kalpenjo package or whatever your name is, that is where we want to create this. If you have not created the package over here the way that I've done this in the very beginning, you can also just create this in the source. However, whatever your, basically wherever your main class is located, that folder or package, you want to right click, go to new, Java class, and then here you give it a name. Now, the name that we are going to give it is dog. And this is the first extremely important lesson. Every single class is always starts with an uppercase character. You never want to start it with a lowercase character as this goes completely against the convention, Java conventions, and they are extremely important to follow. Basically, if you ever give your code to anyone to look over it, if you're not following the conventions, it makes it way harder for that person to actually read it. There's a reason why they're there, and I highly recommend you follow them to a T. So whatever class you're creating, the dog class starts with an uppercase character, making sure that class is selected, and we can then hit the enter button that will create that class. Now, if you have a GitHub repository, then something like this might pop up. If you do not have a GitHub repository, then this will not pop up and you don't have to worry about this at all. If this is the case, you can just hit add and then you're going to be fine. Now, in this class, we can go between the curly brackets over here and now we can add certain things, certain members, right? So we can add the fields over here that we've seen previously. So for this, we're going to say public and then a string and we'll call this the picture, let's say, for example, then we're going to make a public string name over here in this case. And let's say we will also make a public int called age. So those are going to be the three fields that the dog class gets created with. That is basically part of the dog class. So every dog will have a picture, a name and an age. So while these three variables would be the fields, we also could add a method to this, right? So let's say, for example, we're going to make a public void and we're going to call this birthday Right. And you can see this is a custom method. Now, in this case, it is public and void because it doesn't return anything public. We will see in a future tutorial actually quite soon what that means. And then the name of this method starts with a lowercase character. So once again, that is another convention. Basically, your members over here in this case, usually you want to start them with a lowercase character. And if this would continue, right, birthday count, right, then every subsequent word in that name would then be an uppercase character. But the birthday, what is this going to do? Well, it's just going to do age plus plus. So every time we call the birthday method over here on a dog, the age would increase by one. But the next question is, how are we able to create such a dog? Well, we could just create this dog immediately inside of the main method. So we could say dog, which is just, you can see, it suggests the dog class for us. This can now be used as a normal data type and we can call this dog and we can make this equal to a new dog over here as well. So this would be dog with parentheses over here. And now we have created a new dog. Pretty cool. However, right now in this example, the dog neither has a picture nor a name nor an H. Because the way that we're creating a class, right, with this new keyword over here, that happens with a constructor. You can think of a constructor as a very special type of method in a class that helps you to create an object from that class. So the idea would be right now, the dog has something like the following, a public dog. And there we go. This is a constructor. This would also be called the default constructor because it doesn't have any parameters and it doesn't change anything. Now we could change things inside of this. However, that doesn't really get us anything because we still have no way of actually changing the picture name or the age inside of this constructor as we don't have any additional data. The default constructor exists whether or not you put it in. So that's very important. And the, the way that you can think about this is basically that the name of the constructor and the return type is sort of the same, right? Because of course it would return a dog, fair enough, but it is also called a dog. That's why we don't need a void or an int or anything like that. I'm actually going to comment this default constructor out. As I said, this default constructor is available every time you make a new class. However, it becomes unavailable if you make a custom constructor with some parameters. So let's say I make some parameters. This is the normal way that I add parameters to a method as well. So we have string name, we have a, let's actually start with a picture, string picture, string name, and a an integer age. And then inside of the constructor, I want to say this dot picture is equal to picture. I want to say this dot name is equal to name. And I'll say this dot age is equal to age. 
And if I hover over them, you can see this over here is the field, right? With the this keyword, we're targeting the field inside of this particular class. Because we find ourselves in the doc class, calling this basically refers back to whatever instance of dog we have. And then it refers to the picture right here. While this picture, you can actually see what basically lights up over here is the parameter. So be, be cognizant. Usually it's fine if you call the parameters over here and the fields the same name. However, some people don't like to do that. That's totally fine. But just be cognizant of that. You can have the names matched in this particular instance, but usually it's not recommended. But now that we have created a custom constructor right here with some parameters, if you were to switch to the main class, you can see all of a sudden our dog no longer works because, well, this constructor right here no longer is valid. Because as soon as you define a custom constructor, the default constructor, which would be the one that is empty, no longer works. So we can now change this to, let's say, Benji over here. And this is going to be a new dog once again. But this time it has the Benji PNG. He is called Benji and he is nine years old. Let's say there you go. Let's create another dog. The variable is called Jeremy. This is a new dog over here called Jeremy.png. And this is going to be Jeremy, the name, and then the age here is, let's say, seven. And what we could then output, for example, system out print line, we can say Benji age. And to access this age, we say Benji dot. And you can see we have access to the picture. You can see that this is an F. This stands for field. So those are the three fields that are accessible. And we also have the birthday method. We also have a couple of other methods. Those are methods that are inherited from the object class, because like I told you, everything is an object. So there are certain methods that every class basically has. But we're going to use the age right here. So we're going to type in age. And now this is going to print out Benji's age. And we'll just duplicate this. So control D on that line. And we will then say Jeremy age. And then instead of Benji, we're going to call the age for Jeremy. And if I were to run this right, you can see when I run this, Benji age is nine and Jeremy age is seven. So even though they are both dogs over here, we now have two different variables, the Benji variable and the Jeremy variable. Those are two objects of the class dog, right? So it's two instances of the dog class. What I can now do is I could say Benji.birthday, right? So I'm calling the birthday method. And we remember this once again, if we go back to the dog class, right? That the birthday method is going to increase the age. But what is this going to mean, right? Like what age does it increase? Well, what we can do is we can just grab all of this, right? I'm going to select this and I'm going to press control C to copy it, control V to paste it in. And we will see that the age of Benji is going to increase, but the age of Jeremy is not going to increase. So if we run this, you will see that now Benji is 10 and Jeremy is still seven because we called this method on the specific instance Benji here in this case. So on the specific variable. So it only happened for Benji and not for every dog. Now, one thing that might be interesting is that what we can also do with our fields over here is we can change them directly. So this age over here, if I take this, I can just set it to 100. And if I were to print out the age again, so just select it, press control C to copy it, control V to paste it in, we will see that all of a sudden Benji stage is 100, which definitely is not the case. So how, what, what about this? Because this is something that is, of course, a little bit annoying, right? Maybe because maybe in your program, in your code, you don't actually want to be able to change the age that easily because it might mess up all sorts of other systems that you have in place. So how could we save this? Well, right now, those are public and there is another keyword that we can use in order to not make them as accessible as they are right now. That and more all going to be taught in this video right here. Hope to see you there. So, yeah.